If you are a beginner guitarist or a straight out of the box guitar hero, understanding the fundamentals of music is indispensable knowledge to make some serious music. So that's what this video is about. We're going to look at what scales and keys really are and how sensible combinations of notes and chords are organized so that they are going to work for you instead of the other way around. After this video, I'm sure you're going to benefit from this newly gained knowledge. So to make a long story short, learn skills, learn chords, make music. But first, very short and to the point, something about the notes. If we play a note, it sounds like it sounds because of its frequency. The A string on the guitar, for instance, has a pitch of 110 Hz. Now, if we play the next note A, which is on the 12th fret of the A string or on the 7th fret of the D string, the same note, we have doubled the frequency to 220 Hz. Now, we can do that again and again, each time doubling the frequency and making the tone higher. Now, the distances between those notes we call an octave. And they have precisely the distance of 12 frets. And the distance of one fret we call a semitone or half step. In total, we have seven whole notes. On the piano, these are all the white keys from the note A to the note G. The placements of the notes uh, on a guitar does seem a bit chaotic compared to the nice layout on a piano. Still, there is a system. On the 5th fret of the E string we'll find the note A. By the way, this note sounds exactly the same as the open 5th string, which is also a note A. Now 2 frets up from this note A, we'll find the note B. Now you'll notice there's a fret between these notes. Now this is a note 2, obviously. If you would play the note that is in between the note A and B, you will hear a note that is slightly higher than A, and slightly lower than B. Now, if we consider it to be a higher version of the note A, we can call it an A-sharp, and we'll write a sharp symbol after the note A. If we consider it to be a lower version of the note B, then we call it a B-flat, and we'll write a flat symbol after the note B. So the note A-sharp and B-flat are exactly the same in frequency. The way we name this note depends on the piece of music and how it is composed, but that's for another tutorial. Now, those sharpened and flattened notes are also referred to as accidentals. So you've seen it come by many times, I guess. Playing in the key of A, playing in the key of B flat. So what is actually playing in a key? How do we do it and how can we relate this to creating nice music? To understand the whole concept of making music and benefit from playing in a key, we have to know what it is, right? And therefore we must understand what a major scale is. From there we can begin to understand how music comes to life in a sensible and above all in a practical way. So you can write your own music that sounds logical and beautiful. So let's unravel the secrets of the keys by starting with a major scale. To begin with we should define what a scale exactly is. There are a lot of ways to describe this, but there are three properties of the scale that define the concept. Now our scale is an organized collection of notes. The notes fit together in a musical sense. And a scale is often the foundation of a piece of music. Now with this sensible uh, collection of notes we can make melodies and chords that sound well together. And this we may call a scale and even a key. Scales come in many forms and variations and are sometimes specific for the geological location on planet Earth. Because music is art and art defines the culture and identity of people. So, I guess that's why art is so important to us all. Now let's plot the notes C, D, E, F, G, A and B on the neck of the guitar by starting on the note C and use our ears to find the rest of the notes by ear. Apparently, we, sometimes we have to skip a fret and sometimes we have to play them next to each other in order to come up with a sound that is familiar to our western ears. We call the larger distances whole tones or whole steps and the smaller distances we call semitones or half steps. Now the pattern that emerges is a whole tone, whole tone, half tone, a whole tone, a whole tone, a whole tone and a half tone. Now exactly this order of whole tones and semitones or whole steps and half steps if you like makes up the sound of this scale. And we may call this scale a major scale, the C major scale. 
It has a particular order of tone distances that defines this major skill. This type of skill where we find two half steps and five whole steps is also called a diatonic type skill, or short, a diatonic skill. The name refers mostly to the two semitone note pairs. Now we are getting somewhere. Now we have defined the structure and sound of the major scale and we can have a look at the scale starting on the next note D instead of the note C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C and D are positioned on the neck of the guitar like this. The order of whole steps and half steps are different than what we saw with the C major scale. The half steps are at the wrong positions and therefore the scale will sound a little off. Now to repair that, so the scale sounds like a proper major scale, we have to reposition some notes. And to do that we need to raise the third note F, so it becomes an F sharp. Now the first half of the scale has the right order of whole and half steps for sounding like a major scale. We also have to raise the seventh note C to become a C sharp. Now the second half of the scale is correct too and the scale will sound relative to the C major scale as a D major scale. The order of whole and half steps is now the same as in the C major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step and a half step. Just what it should be. So we can say that the D major scale needs two corrections to become a proper major scale in the form of two sharpened notes, F sharp and C sharp. Let's do the same for the scale starting on the next note E. The note E is now the starting point, followed by the notes F, G, A, B, C and D. And wow, compared to the structure of the major scale, this one is a mess. We have to make some serious adaptions to make this scale sound like a proper major scale. We have four errors to correct. The first half step should be a whole step and we will correct this by, the, by raising the F to the F sharp. Now we have a problem between the second and the third note, but we can correct this by raising the third note G to G sharp. By this we also corrected the distance between the third and the fourth note. The half step between the fifth and the sixth note we have to correct by raising the C to the C sharp. Raising the seventh note from the D to D sharp finishes our adaptions and the scale has now the structure of a major scale and will sound like one. <laughs> Of course, we can do this for all the other skills too, like the skill starting on F, the skill starting on G, on A and on B, but also for the skills that start on the notes that lie in between, like the skill starting on the F sharp, the A flat, the B flat, D flat and E flat. Sometimes we need to lower notes instead of raising them to correct the skill to fit a major skill structure. This happens when the skill that starts on notes F, B flat, E flat, a flat and D flat. So let's see how that works. We will start the scale on the note F. F, G, A, B, C, D, E and again F. If we compare this to the major scale pattern of the whole and half steps, we notice that the distance between the third and fourth note needs an adaption. By lowering the note B to B flat, we have corrected the scale to fit the major scale pattern. So you see, this scale of F major needs a flattened note instead of a raised note. The same would go for the scale starting on the B flat, E flat, A flat and D flat as I mentioned before. Only these scales need more flattened notes to fit the major scale pattern. So if we would make corrections in all the skills, we would end up with the right skills. The skills that need raised notes are D major with two uh, sharps, E major with four sharps, F sharp major with six sharps, G major with one sharp, A major with three sharps, B major with five sharps. The skills that need correction with flattened notes are F major with one flat, A flat major with four flats, uh, B flat major with two flats, D flat major with five flats and E flat major with three flats. So this is a list of skills we may also call keys. So instead of saying the scale of C major we can say the key of C major or the key of A major and so on and so on.
So the scale is, so to speak, the key to making sensible music with a given set of notes. Now, this is quite an unordered bunch of keys. Let's create order in chaos by ordering the scales by the amount of sharps and flats. The list of scales with sharps is going to look like this. C major with absolutely no sharpened notes. G major with one sharpened note. D major with two sharpened notes. A major with three sharpened notes. E major with four sharpened notes. And B major with five sharpened notes. And F sharp major with six sharpened notes. And now the magic happens, because if you take a good look around, you'll notice that the distances between the root notes of the keys are exactly a perfect fifth interval, which is seven semitones or seven half steps. So every fifth interval higher, you'll find a key which has one more sharpened note. Wow, that is what we call a system. Now, why not make a circle containing these keys to make a visual representation like this? We'll put the key of C major at the top and work our way clockwise. Every fifth further, there's a new key with one sharpened note extra. By the way, the sharpened notes are added in this order. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp and B sharp. And this, my friends, is also an order based on fifths. Isn't this a wonderful, wonderful thing? Now, this circle of keys that are a fifth away from each other in the clockwise position is called the circle of fifths. The amount of accidentals, which are the sharpened notes, is called the key signature. So the key signature, for instance, of E major is four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. Great, let's look at the list of scales that have flattened notes. We're going to order them based on the amount of flattened notes. We end up with this list. F major with one flat, B flat major with two flats, E flat major with three flats, A flat major with four flats, and D flat major with five flats. Now you won't believe it, but there's a system here too. The root notes of the keys with flattened notes are a perfect fourth interval from each other. So F and B flat make up a perfect fourth interval. B flat and E flat make up a perfect fourth interval. And so on, and so on. Now we can visualize this too in a circle, like this. Now there's order in chaos and more and more, and bit by bit we are getting a clearer picture of the scales, keys and accidentals. Also the flats themselves, e, uh, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat and G flat are ordered in fourth intervals. B flat and E flat make up a perfect fourth, E flat and A flat make up a perfect fourth, and so on and so on. And this makes things much easier to remember. Now why make two circles if we can't do it with one? We are going to be bold and create a brand new circle where we merge the circle of fifths with the circle of fourths into one convenient system like you see here. With the mother of all skills towering at the top and watching over her children, she sees clockwise the keys with the sharpened notes ascending in fifth intervals and counterclockwise the keys with flats descending in fourth intervals. And they meet at the position of the F sharp major key with six sharps, which is also referred to as the G flat major key with six flats. Now we understand the circle of fifths completely, although understanding is not the same as mastering. For that, you'll need to study and practice. Use it to learn it. Light and dark, black and white, heat and cold, almost everything has its opposite. And so has the major scale. And we could call that opposite the minor scale. Now, the major scale will sound happy, but the minor scale will sound more dramatic and sad. So what is this minor scale and how does it relate to the major scale? Well, the minor scale starts on the sixth note of a major scale. So look at this C major scale and notice that the sixth note in the C major scale is the note A. If you would start the C major scale on this note A, then we have created this A minor scale. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Let's plot the scale on the neck of the guitar. So let's compare this to the major scale regarding the placement of the whole and half steps. Well, that's quite a difference.
Now we have a half step between the second and third note in the minor scale instead of a half step between the third and fourth note in the major scale. Also between the fifth and sixth note and the seventh and eighth note, we see a difference. Now we know that the sound of a scale is determined by the placements of the whole and half steps. No wonder this scale sounds quite different. The distance between the first and third note determines if a scale sounds happy or sad. A distance of two whole tones creates a so-called major third interval. We'll find this in the happy major scale. A distance of a whole tone and a semitone, a half step and a whole step, will create a minor third and will sound sad. We'll find this in the minor scale. Every major key has a relative minor key. The minor key will start on the sixth note of a major scale, as we've just seen. So let's see what minor scales emerge from the major scales we've put in the circle of fifths. Now, as we've seen, the sixth note in the key of C major is the note A. So A minor is the relative minor key of C major. They use the same tonal material, the same notes, only the start note is different. In the next key, G major, the sixth note is the note E. So the relative minor key of G major is the key of E minor. Again, both scales use the same notes, only the tonal center is different, causing one scale to sound major and the other minor. In D major, the sixth note is B. So B minor is the relative minor key of D major. They use the same notes, only the start note is different. In A major, the sixth note is F sharp. So F sharp minor is the relative minor key of A major. Now we can do this for every major key resulting in these relative minor keys. So now you understand major and minor keys. It's another glorious day in the Marine Corps. Like I said before, skills are the fundamentals of music. But what is music without chords? Even a simple melody is most of the time based on a chord progression. So it's good to know how chords are organized in the major and minor skill. Now to know exactly what a chord is, I'd like to point you to my tutorials about chords part 1 and 2. But for now, I will simplify the concept. A chord is a mixture of at least three notes. That mixture is made out of third intervals stacked on the root of the chord. When we stack two third intervals on top of each note within the C major scale, we create seven chords. C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B, F, A, C, G, B, D, A, C, E, and B, D, F. Now the chords that are created by these stackings of thirds are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. Now the order of major and minor chords in every major scale is always the same. And on the seventh note, there's always a diminished chord. In music, we number the chords with Roman numerals and we, can, and we call them uh, scale degrees. So for instance, the sixth degree in C major, is an A minor chord. Now because of the fact that the minor scale is extracted from the major scale, the minor scale starts on the sixth note of a major scale, the chords that occur in the minor scale are the same chords that occur in the major scale, only the order of chords differs. When we stack thirds on the notes uh, of the minor scale we get this, A, C, E, B, D, F, C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B, F, A, C, G, B, D. And these are the chords A minor, B diminished, C, D minor, E minor, F and G. Now this order of minor chords, major chords and the diminished chords is in every minor key exactly the same. Minor, diminished, major, minor, minor, major, major. Now you know everything that is to know about the circle of fifths and her keys and chords that come from these keys. This way you can easily find the chords that fit together in a sensible way to make some great music. Now I hope this was crystal clear for you and you can use it to become a great musician. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!